Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Catch and cook videos are pretty much all the rage here on YouTube and I thought I'd try my hand at one. But to make things interesting, I thought I would use one of my backpacking stoves to do up the frying. We're going to use the MSR Wind Burner personal cook system to try to fry up some catfish. First we got to catch some catfish, of course, which we're going to try to do here at our pond here on the homestead. Can we use the Wind Burner for a catch and cook? Let's find out. Thanks for watching guys. So like I said, the first thing we need to do is catch a fish. We're gonna do it here at our pond. We have about a one to one and a quarter acre pond here on our property. It's stocked with all kinds of fish. I've got largemouth bass, I've got spotted bass. Of course, I've got channel catfish, quite a few of them that I've put in there. We've got other things like white crappie, black crappie. We've got a lot of different sunfish, panfish. Those are always good to eat, but we're gonna go for some good old fashioned catfish. I'm not a fisherman by any means. I'm certainly not a cat fisherman. Uh, I'm just doing what I think will work and the way I've caught fish before. A uh, greasy piece of meat on a circle hook and a bobber to let me know when they grab it. I also have a little weight to try to keep that greasy piece of meat on the bottom. Or at least as close to the bottom as I can. We're gonna put two rods out, see what we catch. Could be a turtle. It's a good sign though. I don't know if it's just a fish pecking at it or something grabbing it. Let's pull it up and see. There was a freaking catfish on there and I didn't set the hook. I didn't think anything was on there. And I didn't set my drag hard enough. All right, I think there might be something on the bobber. I went in to get some bacon to put on the bottom. Yeah, there's something on there. It's been about 30 seconds, literally. I think something's messing with our classic looking bobber. Let's wait and see. I didn't have any catfish bait. I'm gonna get a little bit of chicken thigh. All right, I switched spots completely to a little bit shallower area. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna give it about 10 more minutes. If not, catfish bait time. This is what happens when you're a YouTuber. Zero doubt there was a fish on that. And it ran out of batteries. Bobber was like underwater. Chunk out of the, out of the bait. Wildcat cheese. I think I'm hauling it in for the morning. All right, I'm back for more. Let's see if we can catch fish. Something's wanting to mess with this red and white bobber. It never takes me this long to catch fish when the camera's not on. I'm sure everybody says that, but it's the truth. All right, we're back at it with some chicken thighs. It's getting dark. We've got something on this bobber right here. Whoa. Bobber's gone. All right, once again, we got something messing with it. We're gonna see if we can catch them. I'm gonna let it eat it. I guess I'm just not letting it eat it, but I've never had an issue with hooking a catfish. Maybe it's a turtle. I mean, it could be a turtle too, so. Anyway, let's keep, let's keep trying. What is taking it away? It has to be a turtle. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. All right, this other bobber's going now. I 
think it's turtle. I'm gonna let it eat it really good. I'm just gonna let it run across the pond here. I don't know if y'all can see it. It's coming right at me by now. Oh, I got something now. A turtle. A freaking turtle. All right, well, I got him off, thank goodness. Is there a royal pain to get off? But that's a bummer, because that's not a catfish. This is probably another turtle, but we're gonna see. Some of you guys can see this bobber just going crazy. Probably, that's a fish. I hope. That's a turtle, I bet. Oh, that's a fish. Whoa. Yeah, that's a fish. Y'all won't believe what this is. Killing me. Oh Lord, and now this thing's gone. This is probably a turtle. Got something on here too. Oh, let it not be a turtle. Or another bowfin. This is a bowfin. We got a catfish. Okay. We got a lot going on here, folks. It's a big one. He can have my... He can have my... Uh, my hook. It's just about the perfect eater-sized catfish. Was, uh, scattered that was crazy caught two fish at once caught that bowfin and as the bowfin was going I was pulling it up and those things have teeth I don't like messing with them it's uh, the hook was way down in its mouth and it'll sort it out so I just cut that off it's invasive species anyway so maybe it'll die probably should kill it but I was too much in a hurry the catfish I've got on ice here I'm not gonna show you guys cleaning it up because YouTube it doesn't like cleaning fish so uh, if I was showing you how to debone a fish in a kitchen they probably would make a big deal of it but anyway I'm gonna clean it up all right so actually we're out on the back porch in case you're wondering there's a fire extinguisher right there really not too concerned about it we fry fish all the time here in Louisiana but it's a little different because it's a small container now I want to emphasize to everyone right now I'm trying this just to see if it works. I in no way endorse using the wind burner this way. I don't recommend that you do it. Um, I think there's inherent risks to doing it. You have to be real careful. And yeah, just a disclaimer that I don't think that you should do this. I'm doing it to see if it'll work. Uh, it's certainly not what MSR had in mind when they designed the wind burner. So if you choose to do this, you do this completely at your own risk. I would make sure you follow safety protocols, have your fire extinguisher, and make sure you don't burn yourself. So what I did was I cut up the catfish into little small chunks. I got two decent sized fillets and I just have the one fillet to see if this works. And if it works, then off camera, I'll cook the rest. I think it's gonna be a matter of letting the oil heat up very slowly, but first let's get these fish chunks breaded. This is what I like to use. Classic, um, I don't know if they sell this across the nation, but. Here's our chunks of catfish. Actually pretty nice. Smells a little gamey, but you kind of expect that with catfish. This is pre-seasoned, so you don't have to worry about seasoning it. And we're just gonna add 
at our pieces here and give it a shake. I tried out my new Mora fish knife. Worked awesome. Probably will do some kind of review on it at some point. So this has a 20 ounce capacity for water. So we're gonna do about a third capacity and I need to go inside actually because I don't have anything to start this up with. Hold on. And whenever I fry stuff, guys, I just I just kind of go based on my eyes. So that's I'm gonna do the same thing here. All right, it's lit. Let's get this on here. We're gonna start it at a fairly low setting. And we're just gonna let it slowly, that's really low, so it's like just barely going. We're gonna let this slowly heat up and then we'll test it by dropping a little bit in here and there and we'll be real careful and we'll adjust our flame. We've got paper towel here ready to catch our made fish. Already starting to really get hot, so we've got to be super careful. I really just wanted to see if this was possible. Uh, the reason is, is that I would love to go do some catch and cooks. Uh, I think I can catch some uh, bluegill, which are pretty good eating, out in the forest, out at a little creek that I can go to, but I don't want to carry a bunch of stuff out there, and I thought, man, it would be awesome if I could do a little catch and cook with just something like this. The jet boil would not work. I thought about it in the past, but it just doesn't allow for the control that this does. I'm gonna drop a little bit in. Yep, still not ready. And that's okay, I really don't wanna get it too hot too fast, so I'll bring you guys back here in a second. You know, in an effort to be smarter than I normally am, I'm gonna go ahead and check the temperature. Just so that I have an idea where we're at. Yeah, see, we're at 165, 170, so it really needs to come up probably closer to like 350, 375 would be really good. But I'm gonna let that happen very slowly. I'm about 250. I'm gonna actually turn up the heat a little bit. It's just above 300. It's really not. Well, no, it's getting hotter and hotter. Never mind. It's 330. All right, it stopped at 333, 334. So we're getting close. Yeah, we're at right at 350. All right, right at 350. So I'm going to just let it sit for about another. 30 seconds. You really want to shake off any excess. We'll drop in this piece of fish. All right, we're gonna drop one more in. We're not creating a total disaster. And what the hay? We'll drop one more in, here we go. There we go, three pieces in. This won't take very long because it's uh, small chunks. Whew, but they're almost ready. go. And that's it. We'll turn it up just a tad. Make sure that we get this nice and crispy. And you can hear it. It starts to give out a little bit. Obviously you can see why using something like the jet boil would not work because you have to be able to really just simmer this oil. Uh, the oil right now we're frying at just 300 degrees. Only 300 degrees, which is a little surprising. I would have thought it'd be a little more. All right, I'm feeling good about this. Turn it off completely. Let it fry just a little bit longer. You can see that the, it keeps frying for a good while. I had it turned off earlier, but this catfish looks good. Now, obviously, we're gonna need to let this cool completely before we do anything with it. We're gonna do that. Let's take a look at our fish. There's our fish. Oh man, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Little catfish fry. You know, sometimes you get an idea and it crashes and burns. Sometimes you get an idea and it turns out just right. Mmm. Yeah, I could have added a little more seasoning. I'm gonna fry the rest up. I'm gonna add a little bit of maybe Tony Satchery, something spicy to it. Definitely a little gaminess to my pond catfish. These are channel catfish, as you can see. 
Mm. Oh, that's a hot one. Oh, that's a hot one. So why did this work? Well, it's because the MSR wind burner system has such good flame control. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to do it. If you tried to do this, like I said earlier, with the jet boil, it would be way, way too dangerous. I would have never thought to try this if I hadn't known exactly the capabilities of the MSR. I've used it quite a bit now, and I've been extremely impressed with its ability to simmer very lightly. Uh, soups, for example. And I knew that it would work just fine with this oil. I want to emphasize again, though, that if you choose to do this, you do it at your own risk. I'm here. I accept responsibility for my own safety. I've got the safety precautions that I need right here. I feel comfortable with my gear, and I feel like I did it in as safe a way as possible. If you choose to do this yourself, you're taking on those risks yourself. Like I said, I wanted to see if this was a possibility so that I could take this setup into the backcountry and cook something like this. I could do a fish fry out in the backcountry. That would be pretty cool. Of course, I'd have to bring in my oil and then find a way to bring the oil back so that I don't just leave it in the woods somewhere. But we could do all that. We let it cool off. We can put it in some kind of analgene or something. It's worth it. And ultimately, I didn't want to go out there for all that effort without knowing if it would work. The hardest part of this whole thing was catching that darn fish. That was really crazy there at the end when I caught both those fish at the same time. But I was happy to see a channel catfish at the end of that line. I put in a lot of channel catfish uh, about three years ago. That's probably one of the ones I put in. Uh, it's pretty good eating size, and although, like I said, it's a little gamey, it's actually really good. Instead of having to bring a separate frying pan, and, 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 and actually, I think, a more dangerous situation, especially when you're uh, on some kind of a stove, uh, if it's like a little propane stove, it can be really tippy, and I don't like that at all. This actually is very safe. If I do this out in the woods, I'll probably put on little feet on the bottom of the canister stove and I think that'll make it even better. If I'm on super level ground, I have no doubt I can do this safely and just need to make sure I don't put it above a third. It never got anywhere near the top of the of the pot. I could probably put more oil, but I wouldn't do it because I really don't need to. Uh, I think I fried four pieces of fish there at the end and that's probably the most I want to do and it worked like a charm. So just a little bit of a different video today, a catch and cook. It took me all day to catch that catfish. I tried about five times and finally I should have just waited. I had a couple bites early this morning, about 7.30, probably when they wanted to eat. And then as it got dark, it really started to pick up. When I got out here, I brought my chicken thighs out and it was getting dark about 4.30, 4.45. It took me 15, 20 minutes to catch those two fish. Should have just done that all along. Do me a favor, guys. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up down below. It really helps spread things across YouTube and is very helpful to my channel. If you want to make sure you don't miss any videos, hit the subscription button. And if you want to make sure that you're notified when I release videos, hit that notification bell. And you'll be the first to know because YouTube doesn't always notify you when I release new videos. Just trying to think of different ways to use gear that I already have. I've been wanting to do one of these catch and cooks, and I wanted to do it a little bit different. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and as always, stay tuned for more videos here on Paleo Hiker MD.